And it's Astro Monday, and today you're being tested on leadership and belief, and we're going to be talking about all of the things that are happening right now, astrologically, what's happening today, starting tonight, that's going to have a major impact on how you function and show up over the next couple of days. Looking forward to, um, <clears throat> to breaking this down. This last week was exactly what Chris said it was going to be last week, and I can't wait to hear the forecast for this week. I can already feel it coming in. So can you put down in there your comments, put down your moon, your, uh, sorry, your sun, your moon, and your rising. If you have the degrees, that'll help as well. And you can put that down there in the comments and you can give us a bunch of likes over here as well. And uh, well, Chris Witecki will be up here in a minute. Um, and what we're looking for is all the stuff that's changed here in this last week. Like I couldn't have, could not have even predict it. to play right now and we're going to get to see why we've also got the um the eclipse coming up here right away <laughs> hey buddy how's it going it's good been, how are you doing oh uh, good it's been <clears throat> it's been intense i would say the changes last week did you feel the aftermath of the eclipse i did i did i i felt it in a again this whole journey for me this last year has been all the stuff that when I would normally feel something that I'd be protecting myself, I'd be shutting down. And I'm watching people all around me get shut down, having to protect themselves, going through issues, stuff like that. And and for me, I don't feel any of the stuff that they're going through. I mean, I, I can sense that they're going through it. But, um, but it's definitely affecting the people around me. I, for me, it's been energetic it's been um sort of crankiness <laughs> um people some ultimatums kind of things like that too which has also been part of it but um mostly just feeling feeling weird between worlds is what i went through yeah when you uh, i mean i i there was there was one thing that came up over the weekend i felt really tired yep yeah that, me too and i laid in i basically laid in my room or in bed all day yesterday i got up I got up, I went to the sunrise at the beach, and I came back, and I thought, oh, I'm going to have a nap. It's Sunday. You know, three hours later, I wake up, and I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to get something to eat. And then I lay down. I'm going to have a, I need to lay down for a minute, another two hours. Oh, oh, yeah, so I've been having that as well, exactly. Uh, feeling that, and just feeling stories changing. And today, of course, Mercury is retrograde tonight. So. Yeah, that's coming in a couple hours, right? Yep, I think it's six Eastern, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, like three Pacific, something like that. Yeah, four. So we're already hours. having we're we're experiencing tech issues. We already had tech issues happen in Sirius Joy. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, so, we're you're actually getting some bad signal right now. There's some tech issues. <laughs> or is there are you is there a bad signal now? Is that what you're saying? It was happening there for a second. It seems oh, like it's fixed gotcha. itself. Yeah. There you go. See, so speaking, and he shall deliver. <laughs> So yeah, this, I'm definitely seeing it's there's like a rumble in the house. You can feel things, but we're between so, eclipses too, so that's always intense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah so so uh, years ago, an eclipse went all the way through the United States, went through every every city and town that named Salem. Oh really? It did that once? Was that the night? Yeah, the last big, the last big one, 2020, I think it was. Whatever. This one's coming. Oh, interesting. Through. And it's going down uh, another access to create an X point, which I think you know about. So yep, it is. Why do you yep. think there's so much, like, this one sounds like, I mean, is it all uh, hocus pocus fear? It sounds like National Guard is being deployed. It sounds like all people getting ready. It's just this all, uh, CERN is, uh, that up. happens to be the day that they're running their biggest test. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think that's an accident. No, I, not an accident at all. I think, yeah. I think they know something that happens between the sun and the moon, and they're they're looking at you know some sort of an experiment with that. <clears throat> and then uh, NASA is like launching <clears throat> some sort of rocket at the same time. So yeah, some weird they're, stuff they're, going on. They're launching rockets and nukes into into space specifically at, at whatever they're trying to do. But there's a lot of there's a lot of like movement kind of stuff around this eclipse. Well, first of all, I'm going to be outside. Just so everybody knows, I'm going to have I'm going to have my bare naked eyes out. I'm going to be looking at the eclipse. I'm just putting that out there for everybody. So, 
Yeah, you feel positive about that. That's that's fine. It's not, I it's have, not a myth. I won't go blind. I, yeah, I've looked at eclipses before. People look at eclipses all the time. It's like we were scared. It's like Jaws, stay out of the water. <clears throat> Explain to me how blocking portions of the sun when you can actually stare at it. Explain how blocking portions of the sun actually um, makes it more dangerous. Well, if I recall, first of all, I don't know if it does, but from what I recall, there's something that happens with the light rays that bend around the moon, apparently. That's, that's, the, that's the theory, that there's something that happens, the ones that yes. bend around. Because what you see are the, uh, is the light that bends around, is what you're yeah. seeing. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> allegedly there's something there. I know this. I, I haven't seen it, like, drawn on Aztec walls, don't look at the eclipse. Like, it's not anywhere in ancient anything. Do you see like Egyptians doing hieroglyphs that says don't look at the sun during eclipse? Like it doesn't seem to be in any of our culture. And of course, we didn't even have sunglasses, you know, until the last 300 years or so. Right? Yeah. Like, so, so what have we done in the past? Did we not look at it? It's never been. Well, of course, we looked at it. We have accurate drawings of it, depictions of it. You know, all, would everybody who drew it, they went blind when they drew it? No. It didn't happen. It's just another one of those things that, that we've been uh, made, made to be afraid of because there is some substantial benefit or value to us. And, I, you know, that's what my belief is. You can have everybody, oh, wow. you do your own research, do your own research, do your own thing. Um, but it won't, this isn't the first eclipse I've looked at. So, uh, Well, I, I'll, I will look at it, and that will be the last thing I see. No I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I've also heard that red light is good to look at too, like red light therapy that apparently it Absolutely sharpens your is. eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we sun gaze every day. We at least do the you know sunrise, and I I'm I'm looking forward to being able to do sunrise and set again. But it makes a big difference in hormones, hormone production, mitochondria function, energy in the body. Yeah, all these things that we're told not to do uh, have the biggest impact on our general health. So I'll be I'll be out there looking at the sun and. <clears throat> but the but why is there so much energy around this one? I mean, there's a lot of stuff being said. I don't, I don't know why the government's in on it. I mean, I also when I saw this eclipse about nine months ago, I felt right away that there was some major change happening with it. I mean, I got instant information download, which was that the the white the white hats are going to have tremendous boost from this. This is a yes. very positive eclipse. Yeah. So I, the way I'm looking at it, I just did my mega monthlies over the weekend. So I was super busy recording. I do a recording for all 12 signs. And I talked about the eclipse. And the and what it looks like is, to me, this is a major astrological disinfectant. This is like a hey. disinfectant. This is because it's the sun and the moon exactly to the degree and minute. 19 degrees, 43 minutes, exact conjunction of Chiron. I've never even seen an eclipse be exactly conjoined with a planet before. There's always like a little bit of orb or the minutes are a little bit off. So Chiron is the healing energy. It is the healing vibration of becoming what we become. So I feel like what's going to happen is it's going to be a huge uh, spray of spiritual disinfectant. I think dark energies and parasite energies are going to feel hit by this. Right. I also feel that people who have heavy parasites – are going to get knocked down from this too. So if you haven't done your light work, if you haven't done your fascial maneuvers and you're just corroded with toxins and stuff, I think this is going to knock you on your astro. Um, but I think that anyone who has been doing their work since 2020 is going to suddenly sit, sit up straight and yeah. feel sort of super uh, empowered. And I predict, and this is just me, you know, like a sportscaster looking at the race, I don't think it's going to be an energetic frequency war. I think it's going to be a frequency race like two different sides of energy racing for power on the earth. I think the light get ahead. So I argue this is going to make the light take the lead until about August. That's what I predict. So and then I is, predict the dark will retaliate after they grow back after the disinfectant. That's how I look at it. So what, are, so the moon's the job of the moon is when it comes like the full moon is to clear out anything that wasn't, that wasn't resonating because everything in our life that comes through this world comes through an emotional pathway. The moon highly affects our emotions. So that makes sense. Clear out any of their friction. So would this, what would the sun be in relation to that? What is the sun doing? Well, the sun, 
Well, there's the actual love energy. So um, what you have is what ends up happening is when you have the sun, the sun is love and the moon is emotion and the motion is the reflection of the sun. Right. Right. So, so really what you have is love and love reflected. That's, that's right. really what you have energetically. So when you have an eclipse like this, you have love and you have um, basically the moon in front of it, our emotions. So it's our heart and our emotions literally pull us, pull us up toward that constellation. Mm -hmm. It sort of pulls on us. So I think a new moon pulls something up and out of us. So we are, something is born. When you have a full moon, you have a tug of war where you are pulled apart, where the earth is in the center and the earth is pulled apart. So really it's creation energy. This is a creation, this is a creation uh, eclipse because 19 nets to a 10, which is I manifest yeah. in itself. Yeah. Um, the sun is creation. The moon is the other element you need for creation, your heart and your emotions. And what kind of creation is it? The creation of a healing Chiron. So uh, I think, you know, the one thing about the, the darkness of the moon is that you, I think it sort of blanks out emotion for a moment. I almost think that the, this, what happens spiritually is it's a new day on an eclipse because you have, you have your heart, but then you have no emotion. It's dark. Right. So right. it's sort of like to me, like a, it's like an egg. It's like, OK, here's a new emotional experience about to be born on the planet. That's how I look at it. So uh, so if the if the moon is kind of washing away mer water's mercy, washing the water, taking the stuff out of this that no longer belongs with the eclipse would be like the flash that like the flash frying, the flash cooking of our consciousness and all the stuff that we've been working on. I would say so. Yeah, it, it, it's a new day, like a, a, a solar eclipse. Bakes the cake. Yeah, it's it's a it's a new it's a conscious new timeline being born. You can look at it that way. It's a new species being born. You can look at it that way. It's a new energetic a moment being born. It's it's a it's a new energy that's born, and that new energy is very strong healed. Now, I think because of where Chiron has been, you have to look at where Chiron has been. So Chiron has already retrograded and come back to this degree. That means that this degree is healed. Right. So there's no there's no trauma in this. And the trauma is where ego and heart align, nine and one. So yeah. when the when the ego is fighting for the heart. So how many of us have been brokenhearted when our ego is fighting for what our heart wanted? Right. Losing love, someone dying, going for a personal dream. So basically what I look at this as is a reset. Uh, yeah. I look at it as the the restoration of the champion. That's how we're saying it a serious joy that the champion is restored. The <laughs> hero is restored. It's almost like in a video game, you just got three new more lives is what this sort of does, which is why I think this is where you're going to see the light take over, I think, and get ahead through the summer, which means I think we're going to see a lot of things going down. Yeah. You know, a lot of dark darkness going down and the light getting <clears throat> ahead and getting on top well, of that. You, you can sure see it. I mean, there's a lot of distraction out there. The uh, music entertainment industry <clears throat> is going to go uh, not as, uh, you know, round two of the Epstein thing is going to come through there. I've noticed but, that. Yeah, P. Diddy. Yeah, and, and all of them. It's it's all coming out right now. They're all starting to, to class for what's right and wrong. Um, but at the same time, <clears throat> what's happening at the exact same moment, though, is uh, you've got governments repositioning in Russia sending um, boats into the into the uh, into the South China Sea and uh, that, that's happening and then bridges you know the the bridges that are that are serendipitously supposedly um, uh, taken down well behind those bridges are two of the world's largest are the United States largest aircraft carriers can't get out oh really that was yeah. reported. So that bridge? No, of course not. That bridge collapsed, held up an aircraft carrier. Yeah. Ah, that's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I mean, wondering what that was. Looking so at it, it, like it felt like foul play. My my guy oh, said foul play oh. the whole the whole way. Yeah. Hey man, Simpsons predicted it. Or What's it's going on with the Simpsons? What is going on with the Simpsons? There's like, is there like an Illuminati like story writer on that damn? Thing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it has to be. I mean they predicted it. I, and the the funny thing, if you if you guys want to check it out, just go look at Simpsons predicts and look at all this the crazy stuff. They oh, predicted. I've seen. 
Okay, I, the Trump I down feel like they're, yeah. they're predicting a lot of second Earth stuff right now. <clears throat> like um, first Earth and second Earth is what they're predicting. And I think that people are going to, I really, I feel that now. I feel like there's a separate Earth. I feel like I'm separate from that. I can, I can see it. I can see it happening. It just, it's nowhere in my, it doesn't enter into my life anywhere. So my... That's kind of my takeaway is I'm actually no longer going to try to fix Earth. I'm just going to go yeah. create the one I want. Yeah. That's, <laughs> like, that's, I'm going to go find good. the friends I want. I'm going to go create the community I want. <clears throat> I'm just going to, you know, expect the president I want elected to be elected. I'm just going to start to – I'm and I'm trying it out. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to create my own timeline here. And who wants to come? <laughs> Let's do our well, own we're on this. We're on the same timeline. I mean, I mean, that's yeah. that's that's literally what we're doing together. We've been we've been actually on this timeline for the last twelve years. That was our story. Twelve years yeah, ago, we, we had our left leg stuck together. in the old timeline, so we were being split apart like a like a turkey, uh, like a wishbone. We had our left <laughs> leg in the old timeline and our right leg in the new one. So you we know, it's funny again. because you went through a lot of physical. Um, Tearing apart and upgrading 12 years ago when we started this. Yeah, I did. And actually. I went through it the last three years at the end of that cycle. Yeah. Yeah, that was my first phase. That was phase one. There were several, uh, what's the word, demolitions. <laughs> <laughs> there were several demolitions where I imploded in internally. But it was all good. It was all my karma over lifetimes. I understand why it happened to me now. It's because I am so strong. I sort of like, I'm sort of so strong. It's like going down the slide and trying to stop yourself on the slide. You ever do this as a kid? Yeah. You'd stop, you'd stop on the slide. That's what I kept doing. God wanted me just to go down the slide. I kept stopping it because I was afraid of how fast <laughs> it was going. So I ended up turning into like three or four demolitions in my life. <laughs> you know, like, you know I, um, but I feel great now, man. Yeah, yeah. You can tell the difference. Um, I had, um, I, so I had a notification of a, I have a, a friend that passed away last week. Um, oh. Well, it was actually a little bit over a week ago. But uh, it was a, tw a Grandmaster Pisces, 25-degree um, mm. Pisces. And uh, her Chiron was zero-degree Aries, and she went on zero-degree Aries. Whoa. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, That's and I was talking to her beforehand, and I was just, I, I was like having a, a conversation. It's like, you're at this point. Like, what are you learning? And like, are you going to continue to fight this journey? I mean, I, and it was an interesting one. Now that that means that the karma—that's the end of that karma. That was done on that day for a reason, right? That'd be my interpretation. That's pretty phenomenal. I've never heard of that of a death on on a Chiron. Of course, death dates will be something I maybe explore later. I think yeah. they're just as faded as birth dates. Actually, oh, I believe I believe that I believe that one hundred percent. I believe that. When we come in, when we go out, um, are there all the rot, rest stops and big ones along the way are there. The roads that we get to them are our choice. Yeah. I saw some celebrity in the last week that they died. They died on their step birthday. Yeah. So they, 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 it, was, it was one day after their birthday, but it was their step birthday. So yeah. they died on their step birthday, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been seeing a lot of that because I've had a lot of people pass recently. I, I've been very curious as to, I run the chart, I run their chart that the moment they pass. Mm, <laughs> and that's then, interesting. And that's I look at that against right their birth and I put the two together. And for me, it tells a story of, of why they came here and what they did. That's a great, you just wrote an astrology book there, buddy. That's <laughs> actually, that's, that'd be a good book. I'd buy that book for yeah. sure. Yeah. We were it's talking really about Jimmy, Jimmy Carter is 99 and uh i think he's going for 100 we're talking about him at easter over the weekend but i wonder if he'll die well, near his birthday because he's he's fighting he's been in hospice for like nine months well you know what he's um <clears throat> he's got all the peanuts lined up yeah right yeah yeah dun, dun, dun. yeah yeah he's no, a peanut I, farmer I, I i think um uh i've been noticing because I, I i've been tracking everything that happens around me astrologically, right? And, um, and I've, I've noticed that the people that have passed that have been around my circle, when I looked at, when I looked at their astrology the day that they died, the moment they passed, um, it always seems to be very significant somehow to their life. And, and it was mm. like, and, and then talking was really interesting because 
I'm having more because a lot of people are going right now. I'm having a lot of chance to talk to people really candidly before they before the transition. People that know they're going to. <clears throat> so, oh yeah. I think people do know they're going. But they you they, know. they do. They do. I I mean I look back even at friends who had untimely supposed deaths. <clears throat> and I you know, I look back at their social media for a year and comments and stuff like that and things that they would say. You you can start to see, just, it. They, see it. For me it's a slides. feeling. I can feel when someone's ready to go. And this one here, again, I, I tracked down, when did I talk to her last? I knew it. I knew that it was going to happen. So I've been like getting the feeling of what it feels like. Because mm. when someone's ready to go, they, their energy is collecting. I mean, they, their soul knows they're leaving this earth. There's no, there's no accidents. Yeah, I've only had people close to me who are dying. And uh, I see a black line in my third eye. And the longer the line, the longer they have time they have on earth. So, mm. and, and I see, see that in readings too. Because I get quite a few people asking, you know, like if someone, like a lot of clients are, they're taking care of their parents who are, you know, completely gone, for instance, you know, yeah. don't even recognize who they are. And they'll ask, you know, candidly, like, how long is my mom going to be here, do you think? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, kind of thing. And you can see that they're lining up. I can see in my third eye that they're lining up their exit, that the exit is on point. <clears throat> so, so with, with, um, with that being said, I mean, we have a lot of people that are sick, a lot of people that are starting to exit. What's the third world point of view of somebody exiting? Because I, I think this is, it's really important, I think, I know it's really important for people to talk about, because right now, I mean, I, I legitimately expect um, like, like a halving of the population worldwide in the next couple of years. That's what I, I believe is going to happen based upon everything I see in the world. So this is a real conversation. That means one out of every two people are going to be somewhere not here. Mm. So what it, from a third world perspective, where everything is meant to be that way, looking back at the second world, how do we, how do we position those? I personally, from what I understand, you, <clears throat> have to, you have to bring your vibration up. There's no free tickets to ride. So if people are hopping off i think that they're hopping off because they want to reset yep. because they, yeah. they just you just you're so it's once you're really messed up it's easier to start off it's much easier to reincarnate and grow up in a difficult childhood and start over with all your karma hitting you in a difficult childhood because you're young and you're vibrant and you sort of fight that stuff off once you you know get past 40 then people really start to be less motivated about fixing and healing their stuff. So I, I know a lot of clients are like, fuck it. I just want to start over. And, you know, like a video game, let me just reset the game. You know, uh, I, I don't think they get a free ticket to earth three. I don't think you get to just all of a sudden ascend like, yay, we're just going to, because that would mean I could just snap and go to the Pleiades right now if I wanted to. And I don't know if that's the case sure. you know, like, yeah. uh, from what I understand. So I feel like you, you're not getting off. You're not getting off this ride <laughs> until you do the work. Is my personal opinion about it, but I could be wrong. Maybe God's like, no, nope, you can just start all evolved and uh, try that out. I mean, we began that way. We all began kind of perfect, from what I understand, which is why yeah. our wounds are so difficult. Is because we had never been wounded and recovered. This is the first recovery the Earth has we've done. I don't think, from what I know of Earth history, we've never recovered before. Right. We were hot as you know, we came down to Atlantis, <clears throat> hot and awesome and amazing with all 12 you know dna strands open and just able to fly and move objects and have the force and all this stuff then we collapse the earth and we we haven't got we stood back up yet we're still trying to stand back up you know so it's it's so, tough it's, so uh so all all consciousness increases so what do you think about i don't know if you've ever looked at i am bunny the dog no, uh, that's go to TikTok, look at I am Donnie Bunny. They have the, the buttons that they press, but this dog, amongst a whole bunch of other ones, are not just answering questions and having oh, uh, it's the same dog hates, the, hates the little like you don't know, fuck yeah. you. Yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yeah. yes, whatever, yeah. yeah. But the dog the is one. but the dog is contemplating existence. <clears throat> like 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 who am I? Do the like am I okay? Really? Yeah, and and so so um, we're seeing this conscious representation of animals increasing their level of consciousness. Yeah. Some of them appearing to have what we call vocal cords. So they're starting yeah. to, 
go they're starting to say the names and things within the the noises yeah and there's enough of it around there right now to, to you can't deny that it's happening there's something happening and in most spiritual texts okay. they talk about us having you know like spiritual so what what's your take on that my take is that consciousness <clears throat> is expanding you know so it's uh, that's a really good point though of ascension so I could have sworn I've expanded in the last 20 years. I mean, I must be 15 pounds heavier, but I'm pumped. Just kidding. But like my consciousness has been expanding <laughs> like crazy. Um, so I'm not surprised that animals are getting more intelligent. You know, I, I, it seems like they become more into, I've either said to myself, either I haven't paid attention all these years or that freaking dog mm -hmm. is a lot smarter than any dog I've ever seen before. Like I've seen yeah. the awareness happening from, I, I feel like that's probably going to be the case. I mean, from what I understand, from animal intuitives, it's full on conversation when they channel those animals. I don't know if you ever yeah. been with an animal intuitive. It's well, full on I mean, conversation. I have conversations with animals. They tell me what to fix all the time. Oh, interesting. When you're talking to them, when yeah, because I, I, I'm like, I take animals that are like completely like uh, we have some dogs here that was like hip broken, going to have to be put down, fix the hip. Like, like I have a different relationship with them. It's more. They only talk to me when they want something. <laughs> like, hey, dude, come over here. My 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 rear leg isn't working that good. That's how they yeah. talk to me. And they'll go by like when we used to sit out in Vancouver. They'd go by the front of the house, and then they would stop and wouldn't move until their owner would come up and talk to us. Ah, oh, that's interesting. There's a there's a wisdom there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the so the animals are becoming more conscious. We're becoming more conscious in some way, shape, or form. Everybody's up leveling their their consciousness. That means animals, bugs, everything else has to upgrade their consciousness too. Yes. So that <clears throat> puts us in this interesting situation we were talking about today. You know, we're lab growing meat and we're getting people to eat crickets and uh, you know yeah, what and is that? all these different. Well, I I th think somebody knows that. That at some point, I mean, I'm all for, I think I've been a vicious carnivore my whole life, except for right now I'm plant-based. So I think at some point it's good when animals can say, hey, don't eat me. I think, yeah, yeah. I think at some point that's coming. Mm -hmm. Very close. Yeah. There's a hitchhiker's guide scene with that, where the cow introduces itself <laughs> to <Yeah>. the table. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, if, you, if you guys want to see this, go to i am bunny on TikTok or instagram yeah and just watch through the conversations and life situations and tell me that that dog is not conscious that dog is contemplating consciousness more than a lot of adults are yeah well i i honestly feel like we're going to need less and less food uh yeah I, that, uh, I mean that's a third i'm i'm down to one 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 meal and a snack a day and i'm snack. down to one meal a day too i feel like a pig eating three meals a day and so tired and so sluggish yeah and i yeah uh, i feel very tired and sluggish if i eat i i, I, I i'm gonna eat right after this i if i'm if i'm not doing this on mondays i eat at 2 30 otherwise i eat at when we're done at three o'clock and then i'll have one snack um usually something light at about five o'clock and that's it yeah. that's all i do now and if i if i eat any more than that i can i i i first of all i i i feel like i have to eat more and i do i feel sluggish which has never been the change for me it's been a, that's a change for me yeah so I, I wouldn't be surprised i mean i feel like we really only need like a handful of food a day that's really all we need and if you yeah, want to call it need yeah. yeah i mean yeah. i just, yeah, I just we a, yeah go ahead go ahead so you, I, I just did a 30 day uh, cleanse, like the master cleanse. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yeah. It's basically lemonade. I, have, I didn't eat any food for 30 days. Yeah. All I drank was lemonade. <laughs> like, yeah. Basically. Oh, you just finished and, that? I didn't even know yeah. you were doing that. Yeah, yeah. That's really, really cool. That That's a life changing experience. The yeah. After the 28th day, I mean, uh, it changed. I know this. I know that if somebody goes to the food for 28 days, I know that they will become a different person. I, I've, I've done it myself, we've done it, we do it for 44 days, and I've done several versions of, of 20 plus days, you know, since then. What I notice is that, is that when food is no longer a fuel or when I'm not scared of not eating, then by default, um, it changes my relationship with my world around me very quickly. It did. I, 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 feel, I feel completely different energetically. You know, call me Bob. <laughs>
you know. <laughs> yeah, I do that, but I have to spell it backwards. Okay, yeah. Please do. With a lowercase and then with an uppercase. Um, that's so, how so, so, so what is, so, so uh, that's interesting. We'll have lots to talk about in Austin. Yeah. So what's, um, what's the, uh, what's, what's the, um, the tune for this week? Like, what does it look like coming up to the eclipse? <laughs> the eclipse is one week from today, right? One week from today, yep. I'm going to be there in the eclipse, actually basking with other light sun gazers. I'm excited. Um, it's basically what I call the birth of the grand I am. So I call this the grand I am. That's what this month is about. You are birthing the greatest version of who you are in all of your lifetimes. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, just doing the spiritual math, I don't feel like unless you were born in Atlantis and you remember when you were amazing back then, this is the greatest you've ever been. I feel like Donald Trump. This is the greatest <laughs> you've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but um, this, and so what happens is this week with Mercury at 27 retrograde right now, it's basically saying, who am I really? That's what you're answering the question of. Who am I really? Your mind is, and what's going to happen is Mercury retrograding back is realizing that, if I'm going to be this this thing, whatever this is, in your case, you know, for for us, I think it's us coming into a vision we had of ourselves all along, mm -hmm. and, and basically saying, "Oh, I'm here." I think it's for yeah. those who've had vision. For those who haven't had vision, who's been asleep, this is the realization: like, "Oh, I've been asleep. I, I'm this." This realization. So Mercury retrograde is an inside out of our thinking. I think what happens in Mercury retrograde is your intuitive and your logical switch flip sides. <laughs> So if you're mm -hmm. dominant intuitive, you become mm -hmm. dominant logic. If you become if you're dominant logic, you become dominant intuitive. So you end up looking at your life from a different from a different point of view than you normally do. For me, I'm dominant logic when Mercury's retrograde because I'm dominant intuitive by by nature. And um, Venus is going to cross Neptune on Wednesday, so Hump Day. Venus is on Neptune, and that's when you're going to really feel your spiritual mission. Uh, at the same time, realizing your character is changing. And then we have um, the sun conjunct the north node on Thursday, which means then you identify, oh, this is the way. So in a simple way, to simplify what I just said, you realize this week, oh, my God, I, I'm this. I'm the second coming. Holy shit. I had no idea. I am this grand I am, um, which means, okay, I'm going to have to change, behave differently. Mercury retrograde. I can't keep signing up for these carpools. I can't keep doing this. I can't keep doing that. So there's a lot of, I think, disengaging from what we used to be engaged with. Yeah. And Venus and Venus on Neptune is like, wow, I I do feel this spiritual calling. This is my destiny. And then when the sun hits the North Node, it's basically saying, and the way there is the path of least resistance. So the North Node is at 15 for the entire month. Mm -hmm. And 15 Aries is the path of least resistance, basically. It's a net six. So it's when the ego is bowing its head. When the ego is uh, open, it's an open ego. It's an ego open to the heart's commands. So this week is basically you figuring out your path for your grand I am. Like, this is what I want to be, and this is the direction I want to go. And so, <clears throat> so Wednesday, um, I could feel it coming to Wednesday. It feels like there's something coming. And and then, uh, then as we cruise through, the eclipse actually happens a week Tuesday, right? Eclipse happens a week from today friend week from today okay so so it's mm -hmm. a week monday so we're gonna cruise up through wednesday which will be 13 14 and then we got 15 degrees on thursday so that's right. when that's when everything that's when the the beauty of what we've become what we've created starts to come up right so sundays i think i think thursday is when the path just opens it's literally this the you know the the sea parting yeah you know like it's literally like oh and I, I do feel like the, the, you know, I have to stress the path of least resistance is the path. Yes. So this, this is a moment where this isn't a moment. The example I keep giving is like, you know, when you like clean out your, you clean your, you know, you clean out your kitchen and you're like, oh, I could clean out the fridge too. Oh, I could sweep under the fridge. Oh, you know what? I could actually put the chairs up and mop the floor. This isn't one of those times. Like the astrology is saying, no, 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 get, take the easy road yeah. that has no extra nothing added on to it this is how i think the light gets ahead of the dark i really feel like in the race wars we're going to see uh the do-gooders get far ahead in this particular moment and that part of that is that 
you stop resisting yourself, you stop resisting others, you just get in that fast, you know, that fast lane and go forward. So, and then Friday, we'll have all these things that are up here to us, I would imagine, and some of the things like uh, visions of what's right or situations coming in, epiphanies on Friday. Yeah, Friday is, a, yeah, it's a net seven day with the moon and Pisces both. So uh, Friday is sort of like, really, you're probably a sign from God that you're on the right path or not. Uh, I, I say you can go both ways. If you fall down the stairs, you're on the wrong path. Yeah. You know, like, so if there's some sort of, if something negative happens, that that was a huge wake up call, a courtesy call from God. Yeah. You know, pushing like, you on the right path. Right. Yeah. Uh, then, then Saturday you commit. Then Sunday you go for it. And then Monday, kaboom! Kaboom! Abracad it is. Be... eclipse. Yeah. So really, this you could say this entire week is setting you up for the eclipse next Monday, and and the eclipse next Monday is a super manifestation event. It's extremely fertile. Mm. And here's the thing: it's so fertile that let's say you have a, an infection in your body, could triple it. I think. Like so. Things can grow wildly out of control as far as negatively as well as positively because it's basically God putting super glow, you know, super grow on consciousness on that Monday. Yeah. So the, it's a huge boost. And that's that net 10 on Monday, right? Net and, 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have manifestation uh, and that's going to be heavily manifesting leadership, structure, organizations, um, our new process. So anything that wasn't lined up in our body, this is what we're talking about. Anything that wasn't lined up in us, even though it sounds like it's negative, it's not. It's clearing out for something positive. Yeah, and actually, I'm just now sitting here thinking, I'm going to actually be in Barstow, Texas, during the eclipse. And that's right, I think at Apex is when we go live. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. at Apex is when we go live. I'm going to have to see if I can, like, sneak off and bring bring a tripod and just, like, maybe talk. Maybe I'll be live on the scene. Yeah, that would be as, uh, cool. Let's do it, reporters on the scene. Let's, let me uh, – I'll look up the, the apex of it and see if I have that possibility. I'll be at an event, so I don't know if I if everyone's going to be lying down with quarters in their pockets. I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, gotta know so I, 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 feel, I, I feel like it's – like, I've been having lots of – I said lots of people that were close that, you know, have pulled up, transitioned, passed away, whatever you're going to call it. I've had lots of, lots of energies coming in or commensurate energies, like energies around my birth, you know, like the, the you know, familiar energy coming in. It feels like, it almost feels like everybody's coming around just to watch what's going to happen. That's what it feels like. Watching you? Yeah, sure. Or the world. I mean, I, I'm going to say I'm, this is happening with anybody who's got a story that's moving ahead. I think that's happening. I, I honestly, feel, I honestly feel. I mean, I'm just going to speak confidently. I think that we're taking the world back, man. That that we've we've allowed it to be taken over by all this bacteria and these parasites. And I feel fully confident that we're going to steal the football and we're going to score a touchdown and they're not going to know what hit them. That's what I really honestly feel. Yeah. That's, I, I feel that too. And uh, I, I, that's where I said, I feel like the third area. I feel like everything is over here. Everything works now. I don't, I don't have these thoughts of, you know, that I used to get over, like what happens if it doesn't work? What happens if it fails? But I, I used to have a lot of those that I would systematically program myself to get over so yeah. that I could yes. manifest things. And just, I, don't, I don't have that anymore. Me too. I can say the same thing. I'm working on, well, we're working on this live event in Austin. There's a lot of details to be worked out. A lot of my staff is like, we're running out of time. And I'm like, I feel like a Jedi. I'm like, it'll be, and so it is. <laughs> like we, I feel like a total Jedi. I'm like, I, it's no problem. I'll just use the force and make it fly away. Like I really feel... I don't worry about it anymore. In fact, actually, I had a moment last week where I was like, I was worried that I wasn't worried. Wait a second, I'm not worried. <laughs> like there's something wrong because I'm not worried about the outcome. Yeah. So I, I really think that's part of it. And maybe that was it. You know, to me, that might be the issue. It's like what I came to realize after my, you know, shamanic death, shamanic death, whatever that was. What do you call that, by the way, that what we went through? I, a lot of my friends say it's a shamanic death. Yeah, I think I don't think we've ever had anything in the world that way. So I'm just calling it a full life reset. That's what we had. Okay. Post the shamanic death, death, uh, full life reset. I, I realized that 
I was, there was never anything wrong. It was just me. Yeah. It was, yeah. there was never anything wrong. It was only that I thought it, there might yeah. be. That's it. I yeah. was completely effing with my own head my entire life. And it's so liberating when you realize that. Now, I think the reason is, is because there's emotional trauma, which I think is stored in the body, yes. which is what Human Garage is so brilliant about. So I feel like the reason why my mind could never come to that conclusion was because I couldn't get over the emotional trauma. <clears throat> I was so emotionally traumatized. Yes. So once I squeeze that trauma out, and I just did for the last 30 days too, um, now it's like I, I have full confidence. There's yeah. no, some of the doubt was emotional, wasn't intellectual. Yeah. You know, my mind always thought everything was okay, but then something told me not to go, to not allow that. I, I you know, and that's over now. I think, um, you know, part of what, when we re release our new version of the body um, and how it works, it's letting people know that right, we don't, our mind, what we think is our mind, we think it's thought. But thought is actually a reaction to stimulus. We yeah. don't have a thought, yeah. but we have a stimulus. So, so the mind is the observation of the thought. And sometimes yeah. I observe the thought inside my head, which means that my body's in stress. When I observe the thought out here, that means my, I'm out of stress. So we've been in stress in our lives and our bodies for a long time. Um, we've been, you know, part of it is, <clears throat> even right down to, you know, like lefties in school, they used to hit their hands so they wouldn't, because when you use your left hand like that, you open up your creative brain. That was why they didn't want us to do that. Yeah. I mean, it was all architected for us to be subservient in this state of awareness that we're in and we're coming out of it right now. Yes. And I think that's why we're poisoned is to be yeah. subservient. I am convinced that there are wizards on the earth that are aware of the fact that this is an enlightenment period and they don't want us to enlighten. And so they're spraying the skies with chemicals and spraying the foods with chemicals. And I feel like it's all a drug to keep us down energetically. But I also feel like uh, we shall overcome. I feel like yeah. awareness is all it takes. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm kind of on a, <clears throat> I've modified my belief statement because I came from that, that world and I know everybody. Now I'm looking at it from uh, another point of view saying they can't be that stupid <clears throat> and they can't think that we're that stupid. So there has to be a greater principle, which is when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, society changes. Individuals can change beforehand, but as a society, we don't change until we have to. And so if it wasn't for all this stuff, we wouldn't be changing. So what if all this yeah. stuff was coordinated to get us to wake the, you know, wake, to wake the stuck up? Yeah. Uh, I feel like it was tolerated. I feel like there are higher entity beings that would intervene if it wasn't for our greater good. Yeah. So it, I think it has served our greater good. So thank you, Bill Gates, for teaching me enlightenment <laughs> yeah thank you praise well you know at the, at the at the at the care of it you know like i'm since i crossed over that side now i'm just assuming that that okay everything in this in this realm is brought to us through consciousness which means it was brought through good and darkness is a part of it and it has to balance on and without the darkness side i can't have the light i can't have can't i can't even know what joy is if i don't know what 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 sadness is yeah, I can't like I, they, it becomes irrelevant. I don't even if I only had joy, 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 I wouldn't even know it wouldn't even be registered as joy because I wouldn't have sadness. So it's it's what's happening is, is we're being forced as a society or given the opportunity to come up and look at that darker side of us, which some people have had money. They've had uh, situations, relationships where they've never had to look at that, you know, and some you know, and now the everybody's equalized by this. I don't care how much money, how much wealth, how much planning you've done. You've either done the work on yourself and your emotions and the way you perceive yourself in this world, or you haven't. And it doesn't matter how much money. As a matter of fact, a lot of times the people with money haven't done it because they haven't, need, they haven't felt the uncomfortableness of not having stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I find that that's very true. I find that a lot of people come from money actually don't know what to do with the power that they have because they haven't had adversity and they have no very little creativity. They hire the creative people instead. I was watching a video of Matthias De Stefano, who you might know, like yeah, he channels like different him. beings. Yeah. I like him too. Um, and he was talking about a lifetime where he had on another planet where he said that the, that there were two sons on that planet 
And so there was only night and like dusk. There was never dark. He was saying that the planet never went to nighttime. It was either bright or dim or bright or dim. And he said on that planet, there was no darkness. There was no evil. There literally wasn't any of the dark side. They just sort of lived in like happy to like meh. So we're <laughs> from happy to meh. So it seems like, you know, I think we choose to have this. We literally have equal light and dark on this earth. You know, 12 hours, 12 hours almost. Of, And we explore, we are learning these two extremes. I think for the lesson of finding that neutrality, finding that third eye, finding that center perspective of the both of the dualities. <clears throat> and it feels like, I don't know, I feel like I'm getting on that party bus for Earth 3. And I don't even know what's going to happen to Earth 2. Good luck, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm trying to be are... Everyone's welcome. The water's fine. Like, come on in. Like. But I'm not, I'm really not concerned anymore. Where I was very concerned, even like mm, November of last year, I was very concerned. Now I'm like, ah, eh, we'll work it out. Yeah, I, I've been on the we'll work it out a little bit longer, I think. But I think it's a progression of it feels like it's a natural progression. I can I can see when people talk to me now where they sit in those steps because I I've, I've crossed something that gives me a greater view of the whole journey. And I, I still can't quantify it exactly, but I can talk to somebody right away and I, I get a sense of how much longer they're going to be in this journey. You mean how, how long they're going to live or how long they're going to be no, in, stuck on Earth no, 2? In the, in the, let's say Earth 2 is the painful part of the journey. Earth 1 yeah, is really painful. Earth, us. Yeah, Earth 1 is mean, you're going to die. Yeah. Earth 1 is it's, it's, you're doomed. Everything's doomed. It's all going down in flames. Earth 2 is like, I can never get this boulder up the mm -hmm. hill. And Earth, yeah. Earth three is pate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm starting to have that that side of it, which you know, which translates all the way back down to personal issues. Um, <clears throat> because you know, like as I was going through, everything in my body has changed, and the last thing that's happening is my mouth. And I'm like, you know, I, I so I, I would rationalize and go, well, everything in my life my family my relationships my body my health my mental and emotional is better so how could one thing be bad you know and those are some of the things that i would tell myself as i was going through the journey because i, I everybody here that's listening is is got some form of that journey i don't think most people have had the opportunity to do what you and i have done which is is to be fully in it like for for the last since 2018 i've been fully in the journey me too you know yeah, you know, it's like it's like, hey, when I I remember when when I says January fifteenth, I got to get out of the United States. It's like, yeah, I'm closing, I'm packing up. Like I, I'm that's fully committed to their journey. I'm going to go whichever way, and you have been going as long as, as as that as well. I think people can do it faster today, but they still have to go through it. There's no shortcuts. Yeah, and I would describe the journey as making amends with your karma and your trauma. So that's why when I had my Grandmaster Pisces friend, 25 degree, um, with a zero degree Aries in, in, in Saturn, die on a zero, or pass away with a zero degree uh, Aries day. I'm like, that is, that's making amends with my, with my karma. Right. That example, yeah. So did your friend just stand in a robe and just the robe collapsed? <laughs> like, I just, pretty, just disappeared like pretty much, I mean, I mean, had cancer, but didn't die of cancer, of course. You know, just died of a random infection in the hospital. <clears throat> yeah. And, but, but you know, I, I, I had talked to her in detail, like, uh, two weeks before, exactly two weeks before, and had one of those moments where, because, yeah, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like in the body. And, and I'm like, like, are you you're still fighting? Are you, do you want to fight? I, I, was, I was talking having a conversation. Do you do you want to fight? I mean, it sounds like the noble thing to do, but it, do you feel like you've done your you, what you've came here for? You've done. And then as we start having those conversations, and the reflections are, yeah, actually, I've gotten all these experiences, all these things. I've had this this life. I basically I, I've gotten what I came for. And, yeah. And. And I, I, I feel that's what I, I want people to be ready for because this is that kind of maturity and, and what's happening. Even if, we, if we, even if we didn't have all this impending stuff, I mean, the world's pretty sick right now. Mm -hmm. There is no way that people that, that there's a large number of people that are going to pass just from that, no matter what happens. 
And Joe's too. I mean, I don't. I don't even feel it's a mistake. It's what they signed up for. Don't yeah, you? Anyone, I, I, that's, anyone I who agree. Dies, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So helping helping people, you know, fighting for that last breath is um, is one of the most ludicrous things we do in today's society. Like we spend an average of four hundred twelve thousand dollars on the last two weeks of someone's life. Wow. More money than they've cared for their entire life. Yeah. And that type of care. So it's, and part of the maturity for me was, and I didn't want to feel, I didn't want to, it felt like I was being detached because I, I didn't have the same emotional attachment to it. It's like, you're, I, I, I can feel that this is where you want to be. Right. Is that truly and you're okay what you it. feel? And then when you get through the stories, it's like, yeah, actually, I'm, I feel like this is the right thing. And I'm like, okay, then let's not fight. And when you're con- Convinced of the afterlife, which I totally am now. Just uh, can, you know that life goes on. <clears throat> it's a lot more relaxing. Like, okay, I'll see you in heaven. Have a good time. Yeah. So, so <laughs> technically, I guess, I guess this would be the afterlife because this is the one where you die. That is the life. <laughs> yeah, they're going back to life. They're actually waking up, yeah. not going to sleep. That's yeah. the paradox that yeah. we're actually all asleep in heaven right now. <clears throat> and I, and move over, Gary. You're taking my my space. <laughs> Move over your yeah. you're hogging the you're hogging the heaven bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm super I've been I've been super, you know, curious about because I've had so many people that have been passing around me and I've had such unbelievable conversations. It's not like I don't feel like when someone's passing right now, I don't feel, oh my God, I'm gonna miss them and all that. Like none of that comes to me. Uh, like there's there's joy, there's happiness, there's yeah, that's what I legitimately feel inside. Yeah, well, you know, I honestly think there's a satanic, you know, whatever faction of the earth that <clears throat> there's there's that lives off of despair, and so somewhere along the line, death became a horrible thing, not a glorious thing. Yeah, somewhere it turned into like a fear based. Oh God, you know, this can't happen. But I think if you look at old ancient cultures, it was celebrated. It was. Um, and it was, you know, uh, Mexico is great in that regard. They were, they celebrate the death. A lot of, you know, because it's the passing on. You're finally free from this flesh suit. You can go on and have a good time finally and do what you want. So I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine named Scott Cruz. He's a psychic medium out there at Austin. He's coming to Austin. So we're going to hang out there at the Human Garage uh, mansion. And um, he channels the dead like there's no tomorrow. So if there's – It'd be interesting for you to check in on these people. I, you know, I, I that's actually what I want to do. I mean, I had, <clears throat> I had uh, somebody I work with uh, channel my mom after she passed, and she told me, you know, exactly how she died and, and exactly some things. And it was, it was really, it was, it was, it was ironic because the way my mom gave me information at the end still forced me to go through the realization about my past without her telling, me, which was what I which was my, in my best interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they have that wisdom when they pass. Like, they're, I don't know if there's someone standing over their shoulder going, don't you fucking say anything. <laughs> or, or they just know. They just know. <laughs> I mean, like, hey, they, they, they respect, it's just 1,500 lifetimes. Don't fuck it up right now. They respect the, like, like the illusion. They don't, like, blow the illusion. Like, they, they keep it. They live within certain realms. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, they don't interfere with the, uh, the, the simulation, if you will. So it's exciting times. And by the way, you're speaking second, dude, at our event. Oh, you're cool. second on stage. You're after me. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, you and I you. are opening it. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We have to talk to you about what we're gonna how we're gonna unfold and all do that. So I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a fun week. It is gonna be a fun week. We're um uh we're just gonna get we're just gonna starting up the media engine right now. Uh, so if people haven't got it yet, you can get tickets at yours. Where do you get your tickets? Um, it is at unite the light dot love, unite the light dot love. Yep. For Saturday, and, Sunday, the 18th and 19th. It's going to be a blast. And, and you're on, on ours. It's, it's on our website under events. You'll see world tour. That's the start of our world tour. So I'm super excited about it. Yeah. I'm excited too. Yeah. I want to know where you're going on your world tour. I might just follow you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, we're getting it down now. Like we're definitely doing, um, New York on the second. We're going to do Prague on the, 15th but the week before that we're going to do an event there as well 
and and we know we got Sweden, and then we got some stuff on the end cap uh, in the end of July, and we've got that time between the second, third week of June to the end of July, and we're filling that in right now. So I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. Right. That'd be fun. Good time to buy a car, Chris. <laughs> Mercury just went retrograde now. I, I'd, I'd wait for, wait for 21 days. Yeah, yeah, I'd wait till April 25th hey, at this point. Well, that's a good point. What is a, what is a retrograde while well, we still have a few minutes left? So what is a retro, retrograde? Why is Mercury retrograde not to buy things, not to start something new? Well, because you're in the other side of your mind. So you're in the dark side of your mind, the part that gets the least attention, whatever that happens to be, <laughs> logic or intuitive. So... You, if you've started something prior to the retrograde, you can finish it in the retrograde. So you can go ahead and close the deal or go ahead and, you know, um, finish the business because you've been able to see it from both sides of the mind, right? But if something comes to you in a retrograde, just comes for the first time, like, hey, you want to go to Africa? Let's do it. You should probably hold off until the direct because you're not in your full mind. You're not in your right mind, literally, when that opportunity comes. And you want to make sure you can look at it from both sides. But what a retrograde really is, is that Mercury is actually is going the other way around the sun. So, you know, Mercury is crossing one way. And then when it goes to the backside of the sun, it looks like it's going backwards in the sky as it's on the other side of the sun. And then it whips around the sun and it's going forward again. So it's an illusion. And what it means is that we're thinking backwards. We're introverted. We're thinking inward instead of outward. I'll tell you this, like right now, you just coast for the next three weeks on all the plans you made up until this point. And then April 25th, you know, you hit the ground running. And it's going to be incredibly productive from April 25th until the end of June. I'm Right now, I'm already researching an early cancer to see what happens. But this is the summer of love. It's going to be a fun summer. And when, you, <clears throat> when um, things are going to ratchet up and some sort of, some sort of obstacles and personal, I would imagine, in, in Virgo, so starting the end of August, early September, we're going to see some sort of transition. Yeah, we see headwinds. Pluto goes back into Capricorn. So I think what happens is, is in the big race, the frequency race, I feel like there's some foul play that happens in September that sort of squashes the party. So you know that sound of like the needle scratching the record? That's what yeah. it feels like. It feels like we're going to be dancing and partying uh, until the end of August. And then all of a sudden, like the record scratch, like yeah. what? Who stopped the music? Like, <laughs> what's going on? Well, that you know, also, something like that. So fits off with the, since 2020, all of the primary mandates would come right during Virgo and September every, every year. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, reality <laughs> hits. So I do think, I think everyone should have a blast. You should have a blast this summer because it's going to be hard. Not hard, but just not fun, not sexy starting in September. And it looks like that lasts for a good year and a half of just like not fun. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I might be on the party bus Earth 3. I, I, that's I, I'm, I'm like, convinced I'm on the party bus. I think the, all I think those descriptors of people's lives are Earth 2 descriptors. I think we're creating new descriptions because we've never been at Earth 3. And, and when somebody talks to me even about like – this uh, this Vedic astrologer <clears throat> came on and he he uh, looked at my chart and read some stuff from the future and I'm like pretty accurate. But one of the things he said to me, he goes, "Well, this this next year you're switching right now and you're making this change and which is accurate." And he goes, he says, "But I, but a year from now you're gonna be kind of like in self imposed recluse." And I said, "That that's actually about after this year tour and stuff. But that's exactly what it is." And he says, "You're gonna be hanging around lots of women." And I'm like, and I was laughing because I think what he's trying to say, it's feminine energy. I mean, there's a lot of women around, but I think it's not a harem. Is fe right. feminine energy, but he doesn't have, he doesn't have a language to describe that because the world is shaping. Interesting. You don't think it's that you're going to be off in the jungle with a bunch of chicks, do you? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's. That's, that's that's highly. We have a lot of females in our organization, but mine too. <laughs> but I, I interpret it as feminine energy. People that are living in feminine energy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I think I think it's a return of the goddess. So we're gonna. It'd be like that Star Trek episode where we just go to a goddess planet, buddy. Just all women running the planet, <laughs> and we're, we're gonna be the slave. They're slaves. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're going to be on, the, on our knees. I'm just putting a good word in for Chris and I right now when we all become slaves. <laughs> yeah, be easy on us. Be easy on us. I'd make a great Manhattan.
Um, <laughs> whatever you need. Um, I don't know. I kind of my chart says that I'm going to have. A, I'm actually going to be kind of playing house next year because yeah. we'll talk about this. But, but there's um, there there there's other ways of looking at your chart. <clears throat> and mine shows it's a fourth house year. I'm in a third house year of information. Next year I'm in a fourth house year. Yeah. Um. So, so I just assume that you'd have your your jungle base built. And I'll just hang in the jungle with yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. I think we're, we're – because we're putting together and coordinating with other people around the world. So we're going to have spots where people are reclusing from the world to help the world and hanging out and doing things together. That's what I – that's what I'm building. And, you know, whoever wants to come, come, All right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe that's what it is. It might just be that the world goes into, like, another COVID thing. Not, not COVID, but just equally kind of it, yeah. you know, for some reason. And and it does look like it does look like Earth Two is going to go on that, um, and so maybe I'm just at that point I'll just be like, okay, y'all, just I'm going to Earth Three, yeah, and you know, just go eat bananas and. I figure, to- I figure that we're going to be physically going to be able to interact with it, but we're going to be able to move in and out of whatever problems exist, and I do I do think that people are going to have problems. Yeah, I think a lot of people haven't done their work, so. There is a lot of struggle, I think, for some people, for sure. Yeah. And I feel, and I, but I also feel, and it may just be that I ignore it and just don't let it get to me. Just yeah. like. Well, that's, just, what, that's what I think we're at. I, we're, we, we're manifesting. So if my thoughts and my beliefs are that shit's coming at me, that, that I got all this stuff coming, I'm just manifesting. That's what I'm seeing right now is people, I can talk to them and I can hear their words and I know what's going on in their thoughts because their words are a distillation of that. And then you can see it in their life and I can see when they change those words and those beliefs that the life comes at them faster. Yeah, agreed. agreed. I think if you've done the work and someone's asking right now, I feel like if you've done the work, I feel like we're gonna just party as the as the earth goes down. <laughs> you know, like, it's not gonna be an issue. I kind of feel like that's how, you know, there's been a lot of times like world wars and things like that. And there's been pockets of the earth that had no idea the earth was at world war. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, it feels yeah. like to me. If that go happens, war, right. go do your thing. It's not gonna, I'm not, I'm no longer participating in that. Yeah, I'm just gonna go to Jedi Mountain and hang out. When you guys are done, come grab and let me. let me know. We'll hang out. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. let me know when everything's picked up. Make sure you clean up before I come down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let me know, send me a text message. We're going to be partying over here in this jungle cruise. Hello, okay, Cynthia. Chris. I do see Cynthia there. I'll be seeing you soon, Cynthia. It's going to be fun. Hey, everyone, hang out with Gary and I in Austin, Texas. It's going to be fun. Yeah, 12th be, and 18th out. and 19th. Yes, it's going to be quite a quite a ride, and I can't wait to see the garagers too. So, all right, everyone, I'll <laughs> okay, see you on Chris. Thursday. Take care, buddy. Ciao. Bye, bye. Ciao. And if you haven't done it yet, uh, go to our products and our affiliates and partners and look for Serious Joy. Try Chris's app. Um, It's $3.99 for the first month. It will give you a daily forecast and it'll give you seven messages a day that are based on your astrology to keep you on track. It's one thing to to know your astrology. The other thing is to to know it in real time. And the, the third thing is to actually use it proactively to change your life. And that's what his app does. So looking forward to uh, seeing everybody. If you haven't done it yet, uh, we we haven't recommended any hotels in Austin yet. Um, not sure if we're going to do that. But inside the app, there will be other people sharing their their finds and share what you found inside our app, inside of our community portal. Okay, everybody, take care. See you tomorrow. Thank you.